Hey guys, it's Heather from Here She Grows, and today I'm digging up my canna lilies, and I thought I'd show you just how easy it is to do. I don't have a big canna collection, I have a small garden, so there's only so much space for things, but there are a few, actually there's just one that I always have to grow, and now I think I'm adding a few new ones to my garden for next year, because I'm gonna be saving them this year. I liked them that much. So my number one has always been Pretoria canna. It also goes by the name of Bengal Tiger. It's got gorgeous, massive leaves on it that are variegated, so they're striped like a yellowy, and then a bright green color, Color. and then it's got this bright orange uh, flower on it that the hummingbirds love. Now I've not always loved orange. Orange has grown on me over the years and I'm really surprised how much I love it now. So I have to have Pretoria or Bengal Tiger Canna in my garden. And this year I have a new favorite I'm adding to my collection. It's this one here and it hardly looks like what it looked like this year, um, but it's called Toucan Coral and it's from Proven Winners. And I received a couple rhizomes and they took off like wildfire. And cannas have this reputation for being very thirsty plants and they do like water. I mean, you don't want to sink them in a pond. I mean, they do like growing next to a pond, but I can vouch for the fact that they are not as demanding as you might think they are as far as water goes. I don't provide any supplemental watering. I don't have any drip irrigation. So hoses in this area, nothing like that. If we're having a stretch of drought, I will give them a drink of water from the watering can. But I'm always surprised at how well cannas do in my garden with very, very little water. So don't let that deter you. If you think, oh, I can't grow cannas because I don't, my, my soil is too dry. I'm gonna say that's not exactly the case. So this one here is Toucan Coral. This was sent to me this year from Proven Winners and I fell in love with it. I love the color on this plant. Now it doesn't have the variegated leaves like the Pretoria. It's got this very pretty, almost a Kelly green leaf on it, but it grows really fast and it just, constantly in flower and if you deadhead you trigger them to flower even more and then you get more flowers and this beauty flowered right up till halloween it was still going strong hummingbirds love these so i am going to be digging my toucan coral and my pretoria cannas today and storing them for the winter let me show you just how easy it is to do so the cute to dig happens after your first frost and we were very late on our frost this year matter of fact we didn't even get a frost we went straight to freeze and snow here in the chicago area our expected first frost is usually around the middle of october we got hit October 31st with that snowfall. And right up to that point, my cannas were gorgeous. They were still flowering. This is especially toucan coral canna. And as soon as that happened and the cold temperatures hit in, this is the result. It just looks pitiful, but it's not dead. So these cannas are hardy to zone eight. So their minimum temperature is right around 10 degrees. So we've not hit that low. I think our lowest temperature here in the Chicago area has been about 26, 27. But I wanna make sure that I get them out now so that when the temperatures drop and change, which they inevitably will, and who knows in the Chicago area, at least I'll have the peace of mind of knowing that I got them out soon enough so that I can overwinter them this year and have them in my garden next year. If things are going to get really cold really fast or you've got a, a forecasted snowfall, you wanna get in there and dig these up. You don't always have to wait for your candles to turn brown if the weather is telling you, you gotta get them out. So fortunately, we've warmed up. It's really pleasant outside, so I can get these up now. But don't hesitate, don't delay digging them up if the weather forecast says things are gonna change really fast. You're not gonna hurt the cannas. So I am just gonna cut these back and we'll dig them. Now it's hard to believe that this started from just one rhizome. It's, it really filled in nice. And I'm not too particular about cutting them at a, at a certain height. I am just gonna go ahead and cut them at ground level. Oh, here's the tag. So that's what Toucan coral looks like in the growing season. So when you're all when you're finished cutting it back, it should look something like this, and you don't have to be precious with it. I've got some more growth. It still wants to grow. I got a nub coming up here. So now I'm just gonna get in here with my shovel and dig this clump up. I've got new shoots starting all the way out here. I mean, this is, I planted it right here and I've got plenty. This is gonna be a massive, massive clump.
This is pretty impressive considering this is just one rhizome that went in here this spring. There it is. All I like to do is get off of as much of the soil as I can. Kind of break it off. I just realized something. Can you see that container in there? So Proven Winners, when they sent me the, the um, Toucan Coral Canna sample, it wasn't just the rhizome. They had it started in their Eco Plus container. So it looks like plastic, it's not. It's a compostable container made out of uh, plant cellulose. So it's made out of plant matter. So I just, you can plant these containers straight into the ground. You break these little tabs off. You can see one of the openings here. I think there's four tabs you break off. So it lets the roots of whatever is growing in the Eco Plus container grow out of it. So obviously you can see it's done just that. And then this one little rhizome that was in here has made, look at all the babies it made. That's incredible. So it'll be fun to see how many plants I get out of this when things dry. So let me show you the next step. All I want to do now is get as much of the soil off of it as I possibly can and put it back in the planting hole. Oh, got plenty of little worms in here too. This is pretty cool. The canna rhizome actually hooked out of the container. So it was this one little rhizome in here and I've been able to clear away some of the soil, but in order to get at this, I think I'm going to peel away the container too. Watch, the container's going to come loose. It totally hooked out of this. All right, so there's the container. I can just break this up and throw this into my garden. I mean, it's going to decompose anyway. It looks like plastic, but it's totally not. It's just made out of plant material. So done and done. But look at how that one little rhizome grew. And now I'm going to have several plants from this. It just totally busted out of the Eco Plus container. That is the coolest thing. Now let's move on to the curing process and that takes about a week. So as you can see over here, I've got my dahlias that are curing and those are gonna be packaged away very soon. And I store them very similarly to the way I store my cannas. It's pretty much the same thing. One thing I learned when I'm curing things is not to cure them on a porous surface. So several years ago when I first started experimenting with all this, I would set everything on my garage floor to cure and you know, the dahlias would cure for two to five days and then the cannas were curing for about a week. And what would happen is I'd come and check on them and then the tubers and the rhizomes would all look shriveled and puckered and like they had no water in them. Well, they were being leached, water was being leached from them because a concrete floor is very porous and it sucks moisture out of whatever's sitting on it. So now I've learned that you'd wanna put a barrier between it. So I use a plastic picnic blanket and that's what my dahlias are sitting on. For the, for the canna rhizomes, I am gonna just put them in bulb crates I want to talk about something really quick before we go any further, and it's about those toucan cannas that I talked about um, earlier in the video. So I did a story on that on my Instagram as I was digging those up because I was just so fascinated by these toucan cannas. And Proven Winners said, hey, you know what, you really should mention something about those. They're not meant for overwintering, they're meant for container growing. After I compared them to my Pretoria canna rhizomes, there is quite a difference. So the toucan canna series is bred specifically for container growing, and those rhizomes need to fit into these containers. Um, and so you're not gonna fit a full-size canna in a small container like this. So these toucan cannas are hybridized specifically for that. They're a smaller stature, about two and a half to four feet tall, and they're meant for container growing, but they do just as well in the ground too as I learned this summer. But I wanted to mention that um, they may not be the best thing to try to overwinter because the rhizomes are so small, so they, I'm gonna give it a try and see what happens, just out of curiosity. Everything's an experiment. But let me show you up close the difference in size between a toucan canna that's hybridized for container growing compared to something like a Pretoria. So, this one, two and a half to four feet tall. This is the, one of the toucan cannas. And this is the Pretoria. Look at the root system on this. So there is, the rhizomes are considerably smaller on the toucan cannas. So this is the Bengal tiger. Imagine trying to fit this in a container. 
Um, you could break chunks off, of course, but this is a hefty plant. This is about five to six feet tall. This is two and a half to four feet tall. So there's your difference. But I'm gonna give it a try anyway and see what happens. But I just thought I should mention that so that you're not um, misled in any way. Just, uh, I think it's fascinating though what these hybridizers do and that they're able to make plants, you know, take these plants that are otherwise large plants and hybridize them down so that they can grow in very specific conditions. And cannas are awesome for container gardens and in the garden. I mean, I think, Canna's anything that looks tropical is awesome looking in a garden anyway. I'm, I'm a sucker for big leaves and showy flowers. So that's the difference, but I just wanted to make sure you understood that. Now I understand that. So thank you Proven Winners for clarifying. It's wonderful. Um, social media is a great way to learn new things. And this is definitely, I had no idea. So let's move on. So for storage, I just like using bulb crates. And I'm gonna put my Pretorias in one and um, my, uh, two cans in another one. So, and I'm not gonna set them, I'm not gonna set them directly on the ground because I don't want all the moisture leached out of them. So, and what's amazing too is when you grow cannas, you might put, I think I had three cannas that I planted originally, and I have such massive clumps that next year I am gonna have a lot of Pretoria cannas, which is really a wonderful thing. So you may not have gotten all the soil off of them. That's totally fine. Um, It'll fall, it'll dry and come off easily after it's cured for about a week. And you want to leave them in, you want to leave them to cure in a cool place. This garage is perfect for that for about a week. And then you'll come back and shake off as much of the soil as you can. And if you see any soft stuff in there, any soft parts of the rhizome, you can cut that out. Any cuts that you make will cure. So um, don't worry about it. Don't be too precious with it. You might break a few rhizomes. That happens. Now's a really good time to go in with um, some landscape tape. You can find this in the marking section of any big box store. It comes in all different colors and I just find it works a lot better than trying to write on a rhizome with permanent marker. So I just like to write the name of the variety on the landscape tape and then tie it around one of the rhizomes so I know who's who. After you've given it about a week to cure, a lot of that soil will break away and you'll see more of the rhizome. In about a week, these should be ready to go. A lot of the soil will fall away from it and we can move on to the next step. Let's pretend like the curing process has happened. They've been hanging out in the garage for a week and they're ready to go. So a lot of this dirt, a lot of the soil that's on here will have fallen away, more of the rhizome will be exposed and you can pull all that soil off and then store them. So what I like to use is animal bedding. I went to Farm and Fleet and found a really budget friendly fill for storing my dahlias and my, um, my cannas. Peat moss is commonly used, but it's a non-renewable resource. So I do stay away from that. You could use vermiculite, but vermiculite for me is not, um, uh, budget friendly. It's a little too expensive, but I went to Farm and Fleet several years ago and I bought a bag of animal bedding. Actually, it's their pine shavings. It says they're, it's horse bedding. And that's what I've been overwintering my cannas in. And I was able to buy a huge bag. Um, the bag I bought, the, the most recent bag I bought, I bought last year. And I only used about half of it. So I have half of it left. And the whole thing, hold on, let me show you. bag was six bucks at Farm and Fleet and all it is it's just it's pine shavings so all I'm gonna do is once these are cured I'm gonna layer take my bulb crate put a plastic bag inside of it and then put a layer of pine shavings in the bottom and then just start nestling in my cannas like so um, and layer them I'll get a one layer on these are pretty big so it might be there might only be a few in here for each crate. And then I'm just gonna add more pine shavings on top of them. My basement doesn't get as cold as they recommend for this. I mean, they often say they like it between 40 and 50 degrees. My basement stays around 56 to 58 degrees. So one year I learned that I needed to check them more frequently. So you wanna check anything you're storing in your basement monthly. And I try to remember that um, because they do dry out. One year I lost them all because um, I didn't check them. And by the time I finally did check them, they were all shriveled up and basically dead. So you wanna go in with uh, a mister. Don't wanna soak them. You don't wanna drown them because they can also 
die from rot issues. You just want to make sure that you provide enough humidity so that whatever you're storing does not shrivel up. I found a pump sprayer at Home Depot and I think this too was six bucks, so very cheap. When I'm first going to store my tubers or my rhizomes, I like to add a little bit of moisture to the pine shavings, kind of stir them up a little bit and get some moisture in there. And then I can go ahead and seal everything up and store them on my workbench in the basement. It's where they'll stay for the entire winter. Then go in every month, take the rhizomes out, give them a look over, see if there's anything rotting. If you see anything rotting, cut it out of there. You just wanna monitor them, keep an eye on it so that your, your rhizomes stay healthy so that you can reuse them. All I'm gonna do is let these hang out in their crates in the garage for the next week and then go in and package them in the pine shavings and, and all of that and add some moisture to it and then just keep an eye on them for the rest of the winter. I hope you like this video and do consider adding some tropical looking plants to your garden. I find that things like elephant ear and um, cannas, anything with really big, big leaves looks so awesome, especially in a cold climate garden. I mean, they, they're unexpected, they add drama to your landscape and Despite popular belief, I think with cannas especially, they're not the water hogs people believe them to be. I mean, when it's when it's when you're in a drought, yeah, they're going to need water, but everything else needs water too. So, but I find them to be very easy to take care of. I think they give more than they take, and I think that that makes a pretty perfect plant. So, do consider cannas, and I hope you store yours. It's a budget-friendly thing to do. And um, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.